Welcome, dear friends. Here we are again with another study. Here on Monday evenings, we meet at the Spiritual Society of Richmond in Richmond, Virginia, and also in collaboration with our Spiritist friends in Hampton Road. And today we are here together with the Good Spirits and with you to talk about the multitude of inhabited planets. This month of August, we're bringing together the Back to Basics series where we're discussing different topics within the Spiritist Doctrine. And today, the most important topic is about the multitude of inhabited planets. We want to know, is there life in other places? What does the, this life look like? Who is living on those places? And most importantly, where are we on the didactic hierarchy that Kardec brought to us in the book, Gospel According to Spiritism? All of this and much more to come. But before we start, of course, we want to bring our friends to join us so that we can start. Hi, Eric. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Nina. Hi. Thanks for joining us. And to start our night, I want to kindly request that Eric reads a message for, for us. And tonight's message is from the book, Happy Life. When it comes to moral values, no one can reap someone else's crop. We are all our own heirs. Immortal spirits that we are, we evolve step by step as students in a school of love, repeating the lessons when wrong or being promoted when right. Thus, one physical existence follows another, picking up where we left off, correcting what we have done wrongly, or starting a completely new experience. What love doesn't accomplish, however, suffering certainly will. Thank you so much, Eric, for that. We're going to invite everybody to join us on a prayer. We always recommend that if you can, if it's safe for you to do so, if you're not taking care of little ones or driving or operating machinery, that you close your eyes and repeat the words of the prayer in your mind. Dear Mother, Father God, what a blessing to be here with you today. We thank you for everything that you provide us with. We thank you for this blessed opportunity of living on the earth during these moments of planetary transition. We pray that today together we can be with the good spirits feeling the loving presence with us, granting us their inspiration, their protection, and the spiritual treatment that we may need. We pray that these moments together, physically separated yet spiritually connected with one another, we can be a vessel of help and work to the spirits that dwell around us in our homes and our neighborhoods. And we pray that the good spirits can help them, that they can travel all throughout the earth, rescuing the hearts ready to receive the help, and they are tired of suffering and can be helped in the spiritual realm, in hospitals, ready to work hand in hand with the Christ. And we pray for your strength and for your protection, God, as we extend our gratitude to you and our requests for protection, not only for us and our loved ones, but for all of those around the earth, that we can be together working towards spreading the good news of the Christ in our words, actions, and deeds, so that we can bring about our transition to a world of regeneration even faster and more productively. We pray for your inspiration today. And with your permission, we begin our studies. And so be. 
All right, Eric and Nina, I'll see you in a little bit for your comments and questions, okay? Great, thank you. All right, dear friends, as I was talking about in the beginning, what a blessing to be here with you today. I'm just gonna double check on the system to make sure it's all working. We wanna talk about the multitude of inhabited planets. And to start our conversation, I'm gonna bring to you a quote from the Bible where Jesus in John 14 verses one through three, Jesus tells us, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So back 2,000 years ago, our Master Christ has reminded us of the multitude of places where human beings dwell on the earth. And the resource for today's studies is the book, The Gospel According to Spiritism, and this is chapter 3. And that quote is the first quote that you have in this chapter that Kardec and the Good Spirits entitled, In My Father's House, are many mentions here you're going to talk about the different states of the soul in spiritual wanderings in different worlds different categories of inhabited worlds the destiny of the earth the cause of misery superior and inferior worlds so on and so forth so as i describe because a very didactic way the kardec brings to us how the worlds are described, I want you to think about what does that mean for us to know that there is life all across the, un the known universe. So the spirits will explain to us that that verse is the Father's house is the universe. There are many mansions. The many mansions are the worlds that circulate in the infinite space and offer the spirit who incarnate on them dwelling places that corresponding to their progress. So if today we are on the earth, which, spoiler alert, will be a world of trials and expiations, of trials and atonements, such as my, my translation is a little bit older. It, it means that that's the dwelling for you and I. This is where you and I are, and these are the places where we want to take the advantage, the most advantage of in learning and growing so that we can not only progress as an individual spirit incarnated on the earth, but we also want to make sure that we can propel, we can participate in the law of progress so that the world around us can evolve as well as the spirits that can evolve. So many worlds for you and I means many possibilities. So today you're on the earth. It's likely that we live in other, in other worlds in the past because there are different types of worlds, such as primitive worlds, as we're going to see later. The spirits further tell us in the Spiritist Review in March of 1858 that everything in the universe is populated. Everything you see, everything, every next time you have some time, go to the NASA, Google NASA Hubble telescope, and there's other telescopes as well that looks not only at the visible light, but all the spectrum of um, wavelengths in the world. I wanted to go there and Google those images and imagine, of course, taking into consideration those images are, I'm going to show an animation later, but those images are taken from the telescopes. They are eyeing the universe for us. So everything that we see and the things that we are yet to discover and to study due to the limitations of our physical instruments is populated. And this, the um, spirits will further tell us that life and intelligence are everywhere, in the solid globes, in the air, in the depths of the earth, and even in the ethereal. So here is a hint for when we read the spirit's book, when we read the, the accounts of the spiritual colonies in all of Sp Andrea Louise's books, that we can see that is not the spirits are not a bunch of ghosts and clouds living out there. It's truly made of populated worlds, colonies that allows us to understand that there is more than the eye can see. 
the elements of the periodic table that you and I know today must be different in different worlds in order for those worlds to be populated, so on and so forth. And we're going to think this rationally because this is where you are. This is a, um, a graphical representation of the Milky Way. And why do I put it this way? Well, we are inside the Milky Way. So it's not like we can send a probe and take a picture from above the Milky Way, above enough that we can actually image the Milky Way. But the Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. And based on the image of other sp spiral galaxies, the um, scientists and the graphical designers can draw this image of the Milky Way for you and I. And the Milky Way is estimated as a spiral arm of giant stars. And the sun is in the finger called this Orion Spur right here. You probably can't even see my mouse moving. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is where you are in the immensity of the Milky Way. So if we make it a little bit bigger, of course, each galaxy has a black hole in the middle. Here's where we are, and we can even bring it further. There are billions of stars in the Milky Way. Therefore, if we put one planet per one star, the many, many planets there is possible to harbor life. And of course, why would God create such a beauty, such as the Milky Way galaxy, just for us to feel like looking at the skies and find the beauty in the skies? There's got to be a reason for those worlds to exist. And in the Gospel according to Spiritism, chapter 3, the spirits tell us that those worlds offer the spirit, you and I, and all the spirits, of course, who incarnate on them, dwelling places corresponding to their progress. So everywhere we incarnate on the earth or elsewhere, and the spirits who are more elevated and more elevated globes, we are all progressing. Those are the conditions that you and I need in order to be a better spirit and to reach those higher categories of spiritual development as we see in question 100 of the spirits book. So what kind of spirits can you find in each world? So the spirits will tell us that some spirits are more elevated than we are right now. Some are less advanced, advanced than us, not only from a physical point of view of their technology and devices and physical body, but also from an intellectual and moral state. Remember, we have to develop our abilities, we have to learn things, we have to grow morally and become a better person. And as even if you look at the way the earth has evolved, the hominids that were here way back when are not the same ones that they didn't, they didn't survive. So the, now we have Homo sapiens sapiens. So even from a physical point of view, no intellectual, no moral capabilities, no software needs, no hardware, meaning the, the physical point of view. And the spirits will tell us the degree of the spirit's elevation determines in which world it will be reincarnated in. And that's a beautiful way of thinking about this. It's also a harsh reality, meaning that if we are on the earth, a world of trials and expiations, that mean that's the level of our spiritual elevation with some exceptions, of course. It's a gradation. Even the, the categories I'm going to show you next that the Kardec brings to us in this book, also you can think about today we're in trials and expiation. Decades from now we'll be in a world of regeneration. So the, the spirits will tell us that the first uh, world where our first reincarnations occur when we are created simply and ignorant are the primitive worlds. And of course, you can think about there are many different types of primitive worlds. It's not a harsh, nothing in nature is a harsh break. Everything is gradual, such as we are moving to a trials and expiation to a world of regeneration, and the next will be happy or blessed, and then celestial or divine world. So Jesus Christ would live in a place that is celestial or divine because that kind of Highest level of superior spirit is the Christ spirit. There is in true communion with God. Of course, they are going to be living in celestial of divine worlds. And the spirits will also tell us that these categories that have to do with the level and the different categories of evil and goodness within the spirits that inhabit that world. And you know, it's a balance. 
Right now, in the world of trials and expiation, the balance tilts towards evil. And in spiritism, we know that evil is merely the lack of knowledge. When we don't know, or we, don't, we aren't able to remember the divine laws and have the moral intellectual development that we need, then we incur in evil. It's really the deviation from goodness that it equals evil. And then as we can see, just look around the, the earth, there's places and spirits of different moral and intellectual abilities, and that's how it is. So the, the folks who are a little bit more morally evolved model for us what it is to be kind, good, not selfish, so on and so forth. And then we who are an intermediate level can help those who are less evolved and we all working together with the law of society and obeying the law of progress, then we can move forward as a world. So now I'm going to hit the highlights of the chapter three for each world so we can kind of think about where we were, where we are, and where we want to be. And think about your, your role right now in helping the earth go from a trials and expiation world to a world of regeneration. So the spirits will tell us that primitive worlds receive the initial reincarnations of the human soul. So when we're first born, uh, created by God in the human kingdom, that's where we live, in primitive worlds. It's, they are uh, characterized by brute force, no industry, industry, no invention. The spirits spend most of their time looking for nourishment. Also, they describe as more rudimentary creatures. The instincts are not softened to sentiments of delicacy and benevolence and don't, no notion of justice of injustice. The spirits will tell us in this chapter, all we have to do to talk about a primitive world, for example, is look back on the past of the earth where we had different phases of human revolution where we were a little bit more resembling of an animal nature than today, even though we still have only animal nature within us right now. But we're talking about world where we're still learning those soft instincts, living in society, kindness, goodness. We are more concerned about just surviving pretty much in combination, of course, with all of the other elements of nature that the worlds are not just humans in them. They have the, the mineral kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, and the animal kingdom. We're all one ecosystem where we live in. Next would be the trials and expiations where vices and moral imperfections reign. There's a mix of spirits in early stages of development with more evolved spirits helping the spirits that are still dwelling in evil. And I didn't put a picture of any of these because I didn't want to leave a, a negative impression on your mind. And of course, we don't have pictures of happy worlds or blessed worlds. So we have to go back to the books of Andrea Louise and imagine. And you don't have to imagine what the earth looked like where some places are really morally evolved, others are less, some are more physically and materially beautiful than other places. Some places people live in more peace and harmony, with more equality and justice, where other places we have still ignorance reigning within those beings, and the majority of those folks are still going for survival. So in this kind of situation where we find ourselves, we can have that mix of spirits. And in the books, books such as Planetary Transition, the newest um, book from... Divaldo Pereira Franco that has been just released in spree sale. We can see that there are spirits, especially in the planetary transition, which is a book you can already acquire, Leo Publisher or in the Amazon bookstore. You see spirits from other globes more elevated that accept the mission of coming here and helping us and dwelling in places that are more difficult to live in from a physical and moral perspective point of view so that it can help those places grow and develop because we're all destined to be a world of regeneration and then a, a happy world and then a divine world. The law of progress occurs for everything. So when we get to a world of regeneration, it's a transition phase between those atonements and happiness. Penitent souls rest, find calm and continue to progress. 
experience sensations and desires, but liberated from ungoverned passions. And that's why it's a it's a gradual change. And the spirits will tell us that it, there is an attunement. So if you go to the book on the way to the light by Emmanuel, you're going to see then the, there's an example of another solar system, a binary um, solar system, which the worlds are evolving. And then those spirits who are intellectually developed but not attuned with the moral development of those globes are then exiled and come to the earth and they bring with them the knowledge they had and they have to dwell in more material worlds and more material bodies. So then they bring us many of the discoveries and technologies that we have today. So you have to go to the book on the way to the light to find out what I'm talking about. That's just a teaser. Then we can think about where we want to go because a lot of people want to talk about the oh, planetary transition, the world of regeneration in a few decades, hopefully. But then there's a vibratory attunement. If we are in transition between, you know, being governed by the majority of spirits still dwelling in ignorance to a world where it tilts towards goodness, it's not like it's going to be paradise tomorrow. It's going to be a phase where we are tired and it's conval convalescence. It's the same analogy that we can do not right now with the pandemic. If anything, the pandemic has forced us to learn about the medical care system and biology. So you have to learn what a virus is, how vaccines work, how your medical conditions affect the way your immune system reacts. For all that COVID has brought to us to the surface, the differences and the difficulties around the world, and then you tie into that the technology of social media. Then we have to think about we're still evolving. There'll still be things we have to rescue. There'll still be things, but then we are progressing. We're learning. It's not going to be paradise tomorrow. We're all just resting and playing the harp. It's a place where we're going to say, okay, I'm, we're tired of this injustice. And then the vibratory attunement of the planet is going to cause a triage of the same way with the planets on the way to the light by Emmanuel, where if we are not morally evolved to stay on a planet that is moving towards good reigning over evil we're going to be exiled then in a prim in a world of um, trials and expiations and now perhaps even without the technology we have without the comforts we have and most importantly without the spiritist doctrine to give us the consolation and hope that we need in the world of regeneration the spirits will tell us perfect equity reside all, over all social relationships and everyone recognizes God and tries to travel to God and fulfill God's laws. Dawning of happiness, perfect happiness does not yet exist. We still suffer from tests, still of flesh and blood. So there will be still things we have to come through and go through, but yet, just even within the past two years, the past 10 years, we developed the mRNA vaccine technology, the mRNA technology, and now we can much faster produce a therapeutic agent that can help you, prevent you from getting um, seriously ill or even die of COVID. That in and of itself is a great thing that we can use for the next and future challenges that most certainly will come to us because this is a phase where there is the law of Destruction is in combination with the law of preservation is also with the law of progress. The world is going to evolve to a world of regeneration. So where would you like to be once that transition is done? Where would your vibratory attunement would be? And of course, if we're invited to go to a different world, a more elevated world, we we'll have the choice of going or we have the, perhaps we have the choice of staying and helping those who are left behind, our loved ones. Now, next stage. So if you go, well, let's go back real quick to the this, this stage. So it's very preposterous for us to think that we're the best thing that this has ever happened to the universe after sliced bread, right? So we think we're at the bottom and we are very good compared to a primitive world. But here we are in the bottom of the, the chain here. There's still not even halfway through. We're still in the uh, second to uh, sec second to last in the moral, intellectual, and physical development of the world. So we can only imagine how much more beautiful 
more harmonious a world of regeneration would be. So just go back and reread Nosolar. If you read Nosolar, Nosolar is a colony attached to the earth, very close to the lower zones, and receives spirits from the earth. Even in Nosolar, you have some aspects of the world of regeneration where it says equity reside over social relationships. People recognize God and try to fulfill God's law. In Nosolar, there's a vibratory attunement of its inhabitants. Everybody receives medical care. Everybody's housed. Everybody's invited to work. And then it's a, it's a transitory plan, in a colony where people are come, going, preparing to return. It's not a happy world. I'm not saying that. Not even a world of regeneration. Just an example of my, what much more we could be on the earth once we go and think about those colonies. And even in one of the books of, uh, of Andre Luis, he rem a visitor from a higher colony in the spheres of the earth, Asclepius, comes down. They have to materialize him because in that colony, they don't have, they don't have physical bodies anymore, like we are, as we understand. Then they have to materialize him so that he can come and bring the consolation that he brings before the missions around the Ruiz is participating and coming. So there's a lot of things we can look for in the Spiritist Doctrine to give us a guidance on where we want to go. So happy or blessed world, the relationships are friendly. There's no slaves or masters, no privilege by birth, only moral and intellectual superiority. Ties of love and brotherhood bind all humanity together. The, the strong help the weak. Let's go back to Nosolar again. Not saying that Nosolar is a happy world. I'm just saying about even here the part their authority receives and deserves the respect of everyone is only given to those who merit, always exercised with justice. Think about those who govern the different ministries of Nosolar. They are there not because they were born of a certain family, but because of their moral and elevated intellectual capacities in order for them to be able to administer those things. In the happier, blessed world of purified sentiments, of their hate, jealousy, and envy are unknown. Humans acquire possessions for their intelligence of a smaller or larger quantity, but nobody suffers from needs. No one needs to atone. So therefore, if you look at all these characteristics, we don't really have many of these on the earth right now. So we're not yet a world, a happy or blessed world, but we will be. This is where we want to go. Therefore, those are the characteristics you and I want to apply to our daily lives so that I don't act privileged by birth, where I don't give people benefit just because of their birthplace. They're where I can see what I can seek the respect of everyone, to respect everyone the way they are. Give people merit for their accomplishments, so on and so forth. When we make our reincarnatory plans and our multimillionary plans for development, we want to think about, we want to go to question 100 of the Spirit's book, see where the characteristics of superior spirits are, and we want to think about how to accomplish and get there. Because this is also not only the physical world is different, but also the inhabitants of the world is different. So the sum of the inheritance is what merits to be a happy or blessed world. So if the sum is goodness, the world is going to be a good one. Now, celestial and divine. The form here is still human, but more beautiful, more perfect and, in, and pure. The body has nothing of the earthly materiality, does not suffer illnesses, deterioration, the senses are able to capture perceptions that gross matter can't. And there's ease of locomotion. The spirits glide or float. The body development is rapid. Lightness of matter does not offer resistance to development. So we can go through the childhood and infancy that here takes a long time, much faster. There's a shorter infancy and a longer life because no longer we worry or there's anguish because worry and anguish and stress is also detrimental to the physical body that you and I have. That's not only known by spiritism, but also by physical science and material science. So this is the world that we can only imagine what it is. 
There is one description in the Heaven and Hell book of a happy spirit that describe being in communion with the happy spirits. Go back there and there's Heaven and Hell. I'm always going to bring back the, te the teachings of spiritism. I'm always going to make a combination of what we are talking about in the different books of Kardec. I want to make sure we can go to the source. Not you cannot just take my world, my word for um, granted, but you can go there and you're gonna read this because I took this from the gospel court spiritism chapter three. So those are the things we can sit around at night and imagine what it is. Just as Saint Augustine will tell us in the same chapters, item 18, he says, So at night, in the time of prayer and repose, contemplate the full canopy of the sky. And enumerate spheres which shine over your head. And ask yourself, which ones lead to God? And ask him, ask God, for one of these generating worlds to open to receive you after your attunement here on the earth. So there you go. Before you sleep, contemplate and ask God to receive you. Ask God to give you the strength to withstand all and all difficulties that we have in this life so that we can more readily go to see what he's talking about here is ask God for one of these regenerating worlds. He's still acknowledging that we cannot go from primitive to celestial. We have to go through the steps. We may be able to skip some if we can more fastly develop the moral qualities that we need to be. But a lot of us will have to go. Imagine being a Christ spirit in a divine world. Those spirits, just such as Jesus and the other Christ spirits that created all the other planets just within the solar system. And there's Christ spirits taking care of solar system. There's Christ spirits taking care of constellations. This Christ spirit is taking care of the galaxy. Imagine the Christ spirit development that takes care of the Milky Way. Plus, of course, they never work alone. So in order to create a world, you have to dominate all the laws of matter, physic, physical and spiritual um, matter, spiritual development, in order to create a planet. And that planet is going to have to pass through the phases of primitive worlds where no biological life just mineral life think about the earth in the beginning and how long have we been here four and a half billion years so it's not like it's overnight and we can barely go through driving from our homes to our work without checking our cell phones so one of the things we have to learn to be able to be to become to that level is patience everything happens for a reason everything happens at its own time, of course, we can accelerate our growth. But it also means we have to know where we are and where we where we want to be as well. So let's dream a little bit. This is an image. This is from a photographer in Germany. And he took this picture. His name is D. Um, Han is his last name. So imagine these different worlds and the Pleiades. You identify the Pleiades in different books where spirits come from this globe to incarnate on our globe. His Andromeda is over here as the nearest galaxy. And of course, we have Mars and other ones. And let's imagine how it would be to live and have social relationships, parenting, science and technology, ecology, or ecosystems in different planets. So we can dream about how the earth may be one day. Or maybe if we go there and we're granted the opportunity of traveling, maybe we can go and experience those planets right now. How would it be to live there? How much more harmonious it would be to meet our loved ones and go to those places where they are, so on and so forth. So the universe is populated the spirits are everywhere in the known universe and the unknown parts of the universe because I'm pretty sure as we develop our ability to detect and study what's out there, we'll find much more that we still yet to know. 
So it brings us the understanding that we are spirits incarnated on the earth. We have the current social relationships, parents, science and technology that we have at the moment. And then we want to think about how can I contribute to move the planet earth from a planet of trials and expiations to a world of regeneration. Day by day, little by little, you can improve yourself in the moral development of the spirits, moral intellectual development of the spirits can help our planet in and of itself become a better place for everyone. All right, dear friends, and now, of course, we always end with a prayer. We're going to pray for our own world. We'll bring our friends Eric and Nina back for their comments and questions as well. All right, welcome back, Eric, and welcome back, Nina. Hi. Questions, comments, concerns? I, I love the thought of um, thinking about the Milky Way and how beautiful and huge it is and thinking about well, why did god make it so um what a what a beautiful thing to ponder and and then wondering which ones looking at the stars which ones lead to god um that's just uh a nice way to um put in context the the different types of worlds we, we could inhabit i agree with eric and uh, i think that to think of, of the universe as, you know, the earth, the only place that is inhabited, it's, it's, it's really sort of limited in a way and that God would create such an enormous universe, you know, not just the Milky Way, but other universes as well. And that we would, you know, actually trust that, that that's the that ended with the earth being inhabited and that would be it. So it really expands your mind in many, many ways thinking about it. I think you're on mute. As I was preparing these and we, we touched base on this in more detail in our um, roadmap program, you think about we the things we've talked about in the beginning, we talked about reincarnation, Immortality of the soul. We talked about mediumship, which would be communicability of the spirits, and then, which is you know, these books are the true um, proof that the spirits can communicate with us and give us information. And when we go through books such as Heaven and Hell, the spirits will tell us, you know, where they are in the after they discarnate, including the ones that are happy spirits. They bring to us this knowledge and then it, it gives us a perspective that yes we are limited with our instruments in order to measure so we're looking for carbon-based life perhaps we should look at other base you know other different types of of life out there but it is really um thinking about the many colonies just within the earth and how they're the fact that their matter is much more, much less coarse than ours. You have to have different elements of the periodic table to construct things and be in different vibrational levels, so on and so forth. So it really gives us, it can be depressing, and I try to make it in a way that it's something for you to look forward to, but then we can we bring it back and be like, okay, I want to be in a world where it's happy, where goodness reigns over ignorance therefore i can start today and i can help everybody around me to you know if i if i improve and if i help others improve i've done my job and i've um you know redressed many mistakes of the past i've improved and grown so everybody you know you kind of have to be like a collective law of society plus the law of progress as well Any other comments or questions? I see some friends are live, but they are um, shy. They don't want to say anything. I if think not, it, I, I, I would like just to say one more comment is that I, I believe that that gives us more hope, you know, 
that we have a possibility to become better, you know, and not, and that's not the end of it. There is a continuation to the story that actually spreads on, you know, and touches everybody else's lives as well. And that if we can work within ourselves, we can bring out and be able to explore that with the people that are in need around us. So uh, I find that it's uh, it's very reassuring that you have the possibility to make a difference and to progress. You know, it's not the this life is not the end of it. There is a continuation. So it does bring a lot of consolation to the heart to know that you know the spirits who care for us are there. The spirits who were incarnated with us or will be there waiting, or maybe they will be even back or incarnation reincarnated. Um, the the ties are not lost, and yes, we need to focus on our growth, but we can also impair our goodness in others. And they have each person we help. You know, it's the same as we we think about being a world of regeneration. And you, if you were to watch the news, you would think we are a primitive world because it's, the focus is on the negative. Is you know who is bombing who, who is killing who, who is hungry and famine, and those are awful things. Don't get me wrong; we should definitely be eradicated. As you saw, those are things we don't have those even in Nasolar. Nasolar is a colony of the Earth, attached to the Earth. So those are things we are going to, where we have we can have a little bit less and give more to others. And this is such a, a good way of thinking about how can I, because you know, we can only control our own actions, but then we can look at how many thousands of people are every day going through shelters, helping the homeless, you know, working and helping others in hospitals, so on and so forth. And we're just not broadcasting those. So it is a mix of good and not so good. And the, as humans on the earth, we emphasize the negative. Um, so that's why we have to do what Emmanuel said is visualize goodness, seek goodness, mold the goodness and feel the goodness. So that when we look at people, even if we see them doing something that is morally questionable, then we see, we see the gene of divinity as Emmanuel brings to us in the book. Living Spring, chapter, um, message 30, Educate, where the gene, the, the DNA of divinity is inside of us, meaning the potentiality to be a divine being. The divine being is in communion with the divine, because if you're next to God, you're godly, right? You're divine. If you're next to the sun, you're sunny, um, or at least lightened, enlightened, if you will, with where the light is shining, you become the light. So that, that is a good way of thinking. Uh, we are here today. We have a mission to do today. Stay with us. Encourage people to not give up. Pray for those who have. Pray for all of everybody who has difficulties so we can all grow together. That's very good. And um, right now we're going to move to our final prayer. And Nina is going to kindly do that. As I bring my beautiful image of the earth back. So that we can all imagine our planet. Go ahead, Nina, whenever you're ready. Ready. Let's close. Let's close our eyes. Take a moment to relax our senses. And we use our intuition and our caring and love in helping others that are in need around us. We thank you, the Lord, for the opportunity to be here together today studying and learning something new and that we can spread these teachings to others around us. We pray for the souls of those brothers and sisters that are in harm's way, in Afghanistan, in Haiti, that they find peace and clarity, and that the divine spirits, they're around them, 
watch over them and give them peace. That our brothers in the jails, in the darkness of evil and difficulties, that they find the peace that they need within their hearts. And for our brothers and sisters, they're dying in the hospitals of COVID. That they know and that they find and understand inside their hearts that God is with them every step of the way. And we pray and thank you, Jesus, for the mission he brought to us and for the opportunity to apply these teachings every day into our lives. We thank you for this opportunity to be present here today, and we ask for the permission to end this study today. So be it. Thank you so much, Nina, for that. I'm going to remind everybody that we'll be um, with you live next week talking about sleep and dreams. Tomorrow morning, we have the study of the book, Right Path. We're almost at the end of that book. Tuesdays at 8 p.m., the, the study of the book, this, uh, the articles from the Spiritist Magazine. Thursdays at 8 a.m., the book, Calmness by Emmanuel. And on Sundays, you can join us on Zoom. This is not a broadcast study. We, we meet at 11 a.m. to study different chapters of the book, Jesus in the Home Manual, Lucio, open to all as always, we encourage people to like, subscribe, share, follow, whatever the newest thing is. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Yes, we have to ask you to do those things because that's how the technology rates the relevance of the content. So that when you share, like, when you watch, he knows to offer the same consoling content to everyone else. And also, if you are in Richmond, please reach out to us, ssrichmond.org. If you are in Hampton Roads, Newport News, Virginia Beach area, and then you can reach out to the Spiritist Group of Hampton Roads. They have a Facebook page that you can join as well. And then if you are in that area, you can join us right now. Our All of our meetings are live, right, Nina? That's correct. On, online. <laughs> Live, I say online, so that we can keep each other safe. It's our responsibility to keep one another safe and take the appropriate public health measures to help with this situation on the earth of the pandemic. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here with us. Thank you. And we will see everybody next week. Until then, dear friends, stay well. Stay safe, take care of one another, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.